I'm Ben with the BTC Sessions, and this is your bullish bit brought to you by CoinMiles.io, the best place to earn Bitcoin rewards when you spend your filthy fiat online. If you're not using it, you are leaving sats on the table, shop online, or get gift cards for all your favorite vendors, including retail, travel, apparel, home supplies, groceries, and more. Hit the link below and earn 25,000 sats just for signing up. My, my reason for being bullish, it kind of stems from right now, SBF is on trial. And there's some interesting little tidbits of information coming out in and around the trial. In particular, they had uh, Carolyn, his, uh, we'll say, partner in crime up there on the stand. Number one, they were selling customer funds to keep themselves afloat and to support FTX token and do all these crazy things. Basically, SBF told her, hey, if Bitcoin's above 20K, keep selling. It got spun a little bit as they were purposely suppressing the price, but it sounded more along the lines of like they were just saving their own asses to like prop up the price of FTX and all of that, uh, or FTT rather, the, the token. Uh, but nonetheless, the effect was the same. They were basically selling customer funds in order to save their own asses, which was suppressing the price. And Furthermore, during the course of the life of FTX, when there was actual consumer demand for Bitcoin and people would give them fiat or altcoins or whatever it may be, and would say, I would like to purchase Bitcoin, and they left it custodially, well, FTX just would not purchase the Bitcoin. Like it just wasn't there. It was like, thanks for the dollars. We're going to write this little number into your account here. No purchase was made. So, so the demand was not actually reflected properly in the price of Bitcoin because the demand was not uh, actually causing buys to happen. So this was obviously to the detriment of everyone else, anybody who was holding Bitcoin. So a couple things here. Number one, it shows that the demand for Bitcoin in the bull run of 2021 was much stronger than the price indicated. And had FTX not been doing what it was doing, there's a good chance it, it could have been significantly higher. And the other thing about it is that it kind of shows that you can't fight the reality in Bitcoin and the demand for Bitcoin for long, like you can in fiat land. Like in fiat land, you can just paper over everything. And if you screw up bad enough, then the government comes in and they'll just, we'll just print off a few trill and make it all kosher for a period of time. And so historically, we've kind of seen this play out in Bitcoin before, kind of this fuck around and find out cycle that happens. You know, we saw it with Mt. Gox. They tried to lie about missing Bitcoin and everything and tried to just maintain a fractional reserve. Well, you know, that didn't go so well. We saw the same with Quadriga in Canada and another smaller exchange called Einstein. Um, we saw BlockFi. We, of course, saw FTX. Nonetheless, it's been a series of larger catastrophes because people stubbornly refuse to change their fiat behaviors. They think that they can get away with the same kind of crap in Bitcoin that you can in fiat land. However, Bitcoin is incredibly efficient at destroying immoral and dishonest entities much quicker than it would be in with legacy finance. So I guess I'm bullish in a roundabout way because the speed of fuck around and find out in Bitcoin is so much more efficient. And even with these large entities coming in and, you know, the fidelities and the black rocks of the world, you've got this backstop, this reality backstop that nobody escapes the fuck around and find out equation of Bitcoin in the long run. And I can't wait to see what that does to legacy finance and central banking.